You're live. Mm. Ooh, or, there we go. So we're centered. That's better. Okay. Happy birthday, George A. Romero. Mm -hmm. Today would have been his 83rd birthday. Yeah, he's dead now. Oh, well, he died in 2017. Mm -hmm. So the options for this review were there's always vanilla, Martin, Night Riders, The Dark Half, and Monkey Shines. Uh huh. I think I'd only ever seen Monkey Shines. I haven't seen There's Always Vanilla, but that title has always intrigued me. And I haven't seen Night Riders either with Ed Harris, which I think somebody brought up actually in last week's or a previous live chat. Um, do you who which one did you vote for? I voted for Monkey Shines because I really like that movie. Martin, I have seen. Um, it's been a while that uh film. Oh, God, what was the name of it that we did uh, a live chat on as well? It's kind of a remake of Martin a bit. The Dis... God, what was the name of that? I um, don't know. It'll come to me. And then what was the other? Oh, The Dark Half, I also would have liked to rewatch, which is... Uh, the Monkey Shines was actually his first studio film, and The Dark Half was also a studio film for George Romero. Well, we didn't want to do zombie picks because I feel like what's his most popular one? Oh, that, the Night of the Living Dead films. So I feel like that that just would have won. But maybe I I don't know that I've seen those. None so, of them? I don't think so. So maybe I should. Well, Night of the Living Dead is pretty significant from 68, also featuring a, a black male lead. Oh. That's not, you know, murdered right away. Well, I will... Um... Maybe we'll watch that one and do a review of that. That's Criterion. Okay. Well, Monkey Shines. I didn't love this movie. I thought it was okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, I, I think the telepathic aspect of it threw me off. And I can say the story I would have preferred. But the basic story is there's a guy named Alan, mm -hmm. played by Jason Begay, who he's like, this perfect white angel. He's like super fit and active. He's in law school. He has everything going for him, a beautiful girlfriend. And one day he gets hit by a truck and suffers a spinal cord injury and is told that he will be um, quadriplegic. There is a surgery done, but it's not successful. So now he's at home being taken care of by a nurse. He has a friend who's a scientist working on monkeys. And the friend is doing like some research on like, they're injecting these monkeys with some serum that's supposed to make them smarter. So the friend sort of sneaks a monkey to John or uh, Alan, whatever his name is. Alan. <laughs> like as a helper, because he believes that that will help accelerate the monkey's like cerebral uh, progress. Uh, but what happens is the monkey and Alan sort of have like a telepathic connection where the monkey can feel Alan's rage. Mm -hmm. So the monkey ends up killing a few people, like his nurse, his mom, the surgeon, who not only, as we're supposed to believe, maybe botched the surgery, which we can get into, but is also like now in a relationship with Alan's ex-girlfriend. The monkey kills them. Everything culminates with Alan asks his friend, take this damn monkey back. And he does, and we see Alan is happier. But the monkey comes back. And when the friend comes to get it, the monkey kills him. Then there's another character named Melanie, who is like a monkey trainer. And she has like a romantic interest in Alan. She comes, the monkey tries to kill her, but is unsuccessful. Ultimately, Alan kills the monkey. And then we see him getting, at one point in the film, Alan gets a second opinion from a doctor saying like, that accident is not what caused you to be paralyzed you have a congenital disorder or condition that i think i can fix and the doctor does so the final scene is alan after his second surgery and now he can walk the end mm -hmm. yeah i i think the better story would have just been a more like simple version of this where there is a guy like, like a newly paralyzed guy who gets a service monkey but we find out that that monkey had had research done on it. Mm -hmm. So it's like smarter than it should be and is terrorizing this man, which ultimately culminates in the man killing the monkey. I didn't need the happy ending with him walking. I really didn't like, like how sometimes 
Alan have fangs like the monkey. He started developing the same dentitia as. But Ella. then it would go away. Sure. I, like so, he's a vampire now. I mean, uh, what I is think this? you're being very picky because I think <laughs> this film is a lot of fun. I actually, um, I s discovered the author Michael Stewart, who wrote the book before I knew as a teenager, before I anything knew really anything about Georgia Romero. But um, I think I picked up a book called Prodigy at a garage sale as a kid, and. He, discovered Michael Stewart and he has a whole bunch of books that are kind of medical experimental film the, the horror thrillers gone wrong and red monkey shines and then of course rented the VHS um as I said it's Giorgio Romero's first studio film so he was uh talked into making a happy ending because there is an alternate ending featuring Stephen Root who plays um Jeff John Pankow's boss right mm -hmm. we can talk about that sure I watched the uh like there there was in the blu-ray you have there's like the making of featurette that i watched but the opening of the film says that although some scenes may appear traumatic no monkeys were harmed in the making of this film and in the featurette several people say like yeah no monkeys were harmed but the way they're saying it is like i think they hurt some of those monkeys <laughs> but so but my favorite part of the film is the monkey Ella, Ella, who's played by who's a female character played by a male monkey named Boo. I, I I thought the scenes with the monkey doing little things was really cute, like Boo Radley. Yeah, the the monkey's adorable, and if this were remade today, we probably wouldn't get the real capuchin monkey. Well, we got a combination of several capuchin monkeys plus a puppet, which you'd have to have, yes. But and then even like I, I learned a lot in the featurette, but like the scene which we need to talk about where. Alan kills the monkey when he's like, you know, ripping it like a, like a damn alligator. When that monkey falls to the ground, that's actually a dead cat that was white. So they had to spray paint that dead cat black and then clip its ears off. So the guy who was responsible for that was saying like how, like it was traumatic. Like he could still hear the sound of cutting Aww. off the cat's ears. That dead bird looked real too. And then the guy, the other special effects guy was with him was like, well, why didn't you just put beans like in a puppet that would have had the same like effect as far as like how it looked falling. And he, the other guy made a face like, well, now you tell me like 30 <laughs> years later, I'm traumatized and you're telling me I couldn't put beans in a puppet. Um, so Jason Begay. Mm -hmm. who I, I know only, the only other film I recognize him from is he plays Demi Moore's boyfriend in G.I. Jane. He's very handsome. He is. He's been in a ton of stuff. Too. He reminds me of like a rugged Jamie Dornan. Yes. He, mm -hmm. he looks like the kind of guy like if you rubbed on, like if you were, like his face feels like sandpaper. Okay. But we when we first meet him, he's doing naked calisthenics. Um, yeah, I liked him. I didn't think he had the best acting in this movie. He was okay. But he's very handsome. Mm -hmm. um, his teeth were interesting. Uh, like the bottom row and then also the fangs. It, I found it distracting. Uh, his girlfriend, what is her name? Janine Turner. The, the, his, his initial girlfriend while he's still. She's gorgeous. She's from Northern Exposure. Oh. Do you remember that series from the early 90s? Um, when Alan gets hit by that truck. That truck knocks the shit out of him. Like he flies in the air. With that, and he's got all those bricks in his bag. Then when we see Alan come home from the hospital, that beard was a nightmare. Sure. Oh. Ella um, doesn't like it either. I, I thought that Alan has the first like Google home. Because <laughs> he's like, he has this like elaborate system on how to turn on the lights and whatnot. Um, so then uh, a sad moment is Alan attempts suicide. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Here, keep talking. What? Or do you want me to talk? The cast, hold on. Yes, Alan attempts suicide. Uh, what were you going to say about that? Well, it's just sad. And then the, wow. the doctor talks about how, like, a lot of people in his condition attempt suicide. A young Stanley Tucci is the uh, man that operates on him, uh, who then steals his girlfriend. So uh, I think the story is trying to say that maybe Stanley Tucci's character like botched the surgery on purpose because Alan says that so that he could get his girlfriend, which is like, wow, if he did that, that's horrible, obviously. But it was fun seeing Stanley. Mm -hmm. He needed to cut that hair off sooner though. He sure did, <laughs> but you know, we were taught to hold on to it as long as we can, right? Um, again, the monkey, little uh, Ella, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Like doing her little chores and grabbing her treats was so cute. I like when she hugs him. Yes. Every time Jeffrey is giving Ella her shot of serum, I kept thinking he could have done that more gently. Yeah. He just like stabs her. Rapid. She's always rubbing her, <laughs> and, her little feet. And the monkey had good acting. Yes, she did. Or, well, technically, Boo is a he. Oh, well, when the second doctor is doing the consult and he's looking at the x-rays and he's showing the difference between the two, I was like, those x-rays look exactly the same to Yeah, me. he's like, see here? No. <laughs> Do you see here how this is congenital? I don't see shit that's different. They both look exactly the and same. And the actor, Alan and Melanie, are looking like, yeah, there's, there's a difference. <laughs> but in the featurette, uh, George A. Romero was saying that he knew that like in writing the story that that needed to be a, a thing that Alan's condition could be reversed. So he was like the research I did, which he said was not from any book. So I don't know where he got this information from, but that that's why it sounds so basic because he was like, I was trying to figure out like what, how, how can we play the story? So Alan could potentially walk again. It clearly it was not successful because that scene with the second doctor is kind of ridiculous. Uh, played by William Newman, who you've seen a character actor from many films, including Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, and also the horrible nurse, Mary Ann, who uh, decides that she needs to bring a bird to live in a quadriplegic's house. Uh, that's George A. Romero's wife, or was at the time. She's in many of his films. You work for me, lady. Okay, I told you I don't want this bird in my house. It keeps flying around. That bird like landed on his face and was pecking his eye. As soon as Ella comes in, you're like, oh, that bird's, when's she gonna die? When's the bird gonna Oh, die? immediately I knew Ella's gonna kill that bird. Oh yeah. Uh <laughs> it's much like in Megan when it's like, oh, that dog's gonna get it. <laughs> At one point, Alan like bites his lip cause he's mad and it bleeds. And then um, Ella like jumps up on him and licks the bloody mm -hmm. lip. That was gross. I do like, I think their psych, their little psychosexual connection is very bizarre and weird. It could have been pushed a lot further, but I like it. Uh, as well as this, you know, quadriplegic sex scene. That okay, is. that's my next note because after I saw that, I actually spent quite a bit of time reading about like sexuality and people who are paralyzed below the neck. And sure. There were some really interesting articles that I think are. They were interesting reads because basically it's talking about how like sexual satisfaction is really a big part of its psychological. Yeah. And it talks about how orgasms are not like, you know, the, the way we think about them, uh, you know, it's static and there are other ways that people can achieve that sensation and talking about people who are paralyzed. So that was one good thing about this movie is that it made me read a bunch of stuff about that. Sure. And I think it might have. Is it the first film that has a sex scene with a quadriplegic character? Oh, it might be. I'd have to look further into that. But I didn't think that Alan's mom deserved to be spoken to that way. What well, did she do to him that he was so mad at her? But did he, I miss something? No, but he, the thing is, he's devolved. Like he's got this thing going on with his monkey and he realizes it because he tries to warn his mother. He knows what's going to happen when he gets mad about someone. Uh, and plus, sure. he's been through a significant trauma. So maybe his mom doesn't deserve that, but he's not really in a good place. So. But another note I had was that what's missing for me from the story is we really don't see the transition from this like super fit active guy who had like his entire life, like a successful life ahead of him to now he's without use of his body and kind of stuck. He seems pretty well adjusted up until the monkey starts acting up. I wish that we would have seen him sort of act out more in the beginning. Sure. Because then his rage just... I mean, it makes sense that he's frustrated, but I, I, you know, when he comes home, he just seems like, well, okay, this is how it is. Um, his mother's played by Joyce Van Patten, who's a character actor that's been in a ton of stuff. And her older brother was Dick Van Patten, who was um, the king in Spaceballs oh. and was in a couple other Mel Brooks productions. But she, what did you think of uh, Jason's acting? I th it doesn't bother me. Again, it's a B movie. I, I don't know. Did you like the telepathic component? Again, the suspension of disbelief is okay enough for me because that it is what it is. Like the monkey has a psychic connection and kills for him. I it's don't know. too much. It's too much. I think that the monkey should have just been smart enough to know that it wants Alan to itself. So it's going to get rid of all the peripheral people. I think we could have done that. But then we're talking about a studio film that insists on 
feeding us facts all the time, it's, it's, you know, across the board in American cinema. So that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, of course, it could have been uh, an art house version of this film where we would have had to do a little more work to understand this, the psychological component. But At the end, like the final showdown with the monkey where Alan has like the, the phone mm -hmm. with the cord. I couldn't believe that his wheelchair, his motorized wheelchair couldn't pull that phone like from the cord. Like, sure. like when it hits the end of its rope, it like pulls this big ass, heavy ass wheelchair back. I don't think so. I'm old enough to remember phones with cords and they were not that sturdy. Okay. Right. Yeah. They, <laughs> like you could kill someone. Did you notice that Jeffrey's car got robbed in the rain by two hoodlums? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> well, did you see how he's parked as well? Like, and then why are you parked like that? <laughs> you parked like someone in distress and left the door open. So that's just inviting crime. The bro the broken windows. I don't want to ever have to fight a capuchin monkey, but I feel like I could take out a capuchin monkey. I can't believe that these people were getting taken down by this little ass monkey. That'd be like me getting beat up by the cat. <laughs> but it's killing, it, like it kills Stanley Tucci by burning him. No, but yes, you're death. right. But Jeffrey, that that monkey whoops Jeffrey's ass. Well, he's and also, he all, the monkey also uh, knocks Melanie down. Mm -hmm. I don't think Jeffrey's so. cracked out. The movie that, is, or the movie, the scene that is creepy is. Um, Melanie is knocked out and she's her hair's wet because it's raining outside. The monkey's, and the trying, monkey's to light. trying to light her hair on fire. That was funny. Yeah, that was that was really funny. I was entertained. Um, when Ella pees on Alan again, I didn't love his acting because he's like, You slime, you <laughs> filth. <laughs> well, is that the script's fault? Or fault? I don't know. I mean, it's funny. Um, Speaking of like Ella trying to burn the hair, also when Ella was trying to stab Melanie with the needle and the little monkey's like, yeah, <laughs> and it bends the, it bends the I believe that monkey should have received some nomination for acting. I'm sure it did not receive the, the monkey did not receive the compensation he deserved. I'm sure of it. So if a person hasn't seen this, I would say you would need, at least need to watch it for the ending when Alan, the man in the wheelchair, kills his monkey because he bites the monkey like in the neck. And then he's like, how would you describe that motion? Like, there's a word for that. Not ravishing. Um, anyway, that's funny. Yeah, like what, what, what alligators do as well. Because uh, in the featurette, the director was telling him, like, I just want to do one take. I don't want to do multiple because that's what Jason wanted to do. So he's like, just go for it and do it for as long as you can before you throw it. So that's what we got. And I thought it looked good. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, Kate McNeil, who plays Melanie, reminds me, she looks like a lot of women from the, like blonde white ladies from the 80s, but uh, I kept getting Lori Singer, if you remember from Footloose and a few other things, I think, or maybe a Hemingway. Well, I thought she looked like Muriel Hemingway, or she wanted to be like Muriel Hemingway. Well, first you said Margot, the one who killed One her. of those. Yeah. They all look the same. No. The well, Hemingways, the Hemingways, not white people. I think Muriel's beautiful, but yeah. So I know it was a dream sequence, but... At the end, when um, Alan is getting surgery on her back, his back, it really bothered me that because his injury is in his cervical spine. Yeah, and they're cutting right but down. But they're cutting down like in his thoracic spine. Yeah, that well, really bothers also, me. Also, the, the second. <laughs> this is why he's paralyzed because his medical team doesn't know what to do. Also, the second scene of it, there's no scar tissue. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. And they cut in the same place. But like you say, suspension of disbelief, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mind this. I think those are, of course, things you should pick up on and pick apart. But I, I also think it's a lot of fun. And I probably, the nostalgia factor for me watching it as a teen. Uh, and I do recommend if you like it enough, the book is good, a little different. Um, and if you like B-grade medical horror thriller, Pulp Fiction, Michael Stewart has several books worth checking out. Okay, so the the ending we got, which is that um, Alan gets a second surgery and now he's able to walk and he's going to be with Melanie. The ending that George Romero wanted was that Alan's friend, Jeffrey, the scientist, he has a boss played by Stephen Root. Mm -hmm. The ending is that we see Stephen Root going back to like the laboratory and there are a bunch of like animal rights activists protesting and he goes inside and starts injecting himself with the uh, serum and then we see all the monkeys go crazy so the idea was that maybe these monkeys will now 
have the same temperament as Ella. But he said, so George Romero in the featurette said that he was scheduled to direct Pet Cemetery, and that he had to drop that project because the studio insisted that he redo the ending for Monkey Shines wow. for what we got. So I learned that. I also learned that the crew found it very difficult to work with the monkeys because there were several monkeys on set. And he was like, they're cute and fun. And if everyone on set is in a good mood that day, they can tolerate the monkeys not. But oftentimes everyone was frustrated because they were really long shoot days and that the monkeys did not. George Romero also said that he had to shoot a ton of footage because of the monkeys and trying to get the right shots. So mm -hmm. it took forever for him to edit it. I told you about the dead cat. Mm -hmm. um, I also don't, you know, a lot of old, well, um, science thrillers, uh, the, you know, the serum looks like Gatorade or Kool-Aid, which I always find distracting. Like just have it be a clear or... Romero said he hated the marketing of this film, like the initial marketing, because he thought it made it seem like cutesy and he wanted it to be more menacing to let people know it's a horror film. And obviously the marketing backfired because um, there were people protesting at the premiere saying that the tagline and the poster art was insensitive to people with physical disabilities. So, you know, not only did he not like their approach, but it ended up backfiring. And then the film obviously wasn't a success. Right. Well, not obviously, but it wasn't. Lastly, um, I didn't realize that Jason Begay is like, he's on some like, he's been working a lot yeah. all these years. He's in some big series. But yeah. he's known for his very gravelly voice, mm -hmm. which he does not have in this movie. He got that voice because in like 1999, well, first I was going to say, he still looks really good. Mm -hmm. But his super gravelly voice is due to, he got into a bad car accident in 1999 and he had to be intubated. And he said that while he was intubated in the hospital, he would often like yank out the tube and that caused a lot of damage to his vocal cords. And that's why his voice is so gravelly now. So that was interesting. What would you give this movie? Three. I would give it two and a half out of five. I thought it was okay. Sure. Would I watch it again? Maybe in a theater, like at the New Beverly, you know. Quentin. If, if, if I can find good parking, yeah, I might go. But what else do you want to say about this movie? I, I just really enjoy it. Um, although there, I could have watched any of these Romero films that were in the poll, but uh, The Dark Half is quite fun as well. And a decent Stephen King novel. But my favorite Romero film is Creepshow, for the record. Is Leslie Nielsen in one of those skits? Mm -hmm. And Adrian Barbeau. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was his first studio film. Monkey Shines is technically his first studio film. Oh, but Creepshow had a bigger budget than Monkey Shines. I'm not sure. I think that's what I read. Okay. Yeah, I, I like how the movie looks. It's well put together. And the, you know, the, the, the wrangling of the monkey looks great. But yeah, the story I found kind of silly more silly than i would care for sure okay i'll go through the comments hello 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 i've seen the crazies because it's been remade right we've seen the original and the remake yeah the remake's not good i remember seeing this trailer before a kids movie when i was really little and being completely traumatized i actually didn't watch the trailer for this movie so i probably should um the dark what is the story of the dark half uh, it's the story of, uh, Timothy Hutton plays a twin who absorbed, well, he absorbed his twin while well, in utero. Uh, and then there are kind of weird psychic connection things happening there. Amy Madigan, the wife of Ed Harris is also in it. Um, a young, oh, someone said our reviews are great. Thank you. After my spinal cord injury, some people were really trying to convince me to get a helper monkey. <laughs> Well, I mean... I'm sure they're usually not like this. <laughs> well, I would imagine a helper monkey is more capable than like a like a service dog, right? Sure. Well, they have hands. You hope we'll review Film 65. I really want to see Film 65. That'll I also fun. really want to see Inside with Willem Dafoe. That trailer looks good. That'll be in Berlin. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
when that monkey throws the, oh that's right so the way the mon the way ella kills alan's mom is he th the monkey throws a hair dryer that had to have been plugged in obviously um into the bathtub <laughs> so the monkey knows how things work well the monkey's smart it is very smart running with a backpack of bricks is that what is that who's being forced to run with the back oh does alan when he's running? Yeah, remember? Because you see the brick shatter. That's right. I forgot. Him. I was so distracted by the naked calisthenics. Like, what an what an odd way to open the film. Well, it's showing you what a snack he is before he gets I guess. Mangled. I guess. Like Bruce Jenner. Yeah, his house was advanced. You've never seen Monkey Shines. I would recommend checking it out. Yeah. Yeah. Someone saw it for the first time last year and was shocked at how it developed towards the end. <laughs> um, oh, the film I was trying to think of that Martin is, that's kind of a remake of Romero's Martin is The Transfiguration. Oh, that we did oh that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, you um, you have your Dean and DeLuca mug. I do. Thank you for saying we have a nice kitchen. <laughs> And that was the tagline for Monkey Shine. An experiment in fear. But there's also this little sing-songy poem. Yeah, about a man in a chair. That's what people found offensive. Because it says, like, because it's implying that someone in a wheelchair would, like, that that their life is over. I mean, I do think that if, if, if that were the intention, that that is offensive, I'm sure they were just trying to make a poem that rhymed. But, yes. yeah, in hindsight, it's like, you got to be careful. Uh fun movie an experiment there's a film a blake edwards film starring lee remick called i think an experiment in terror oh, i do like the poster the best acting in the movie is the monkey and alan's butt we don't see alan's butt do we, we do in the beginning oh that's right well and then stanley tucci says like he what does he say like his butt is hairier he, than he says something to the nurse like his butts hairier than your face or something. something. He says something disparaging to the nurse where it's like, okay, you're one of those doctors. Where do you get a dead cat? Um, you order them from the same place you get like pig, like for cadaver use, like in science classes. For, I remember- Cause I've had to order some. When they did press for the eyes of my mother. We got a box. Well, you received a box. Um, and there was a cow eye in it. and But there was no, there was no delineation on the box to suggest where it came from. So I, I was totally perplexed for a while uh, that who would have sent me a cow eye, an actual cow eye yeah. that we had in the fridge. <laughs> oh, Jason Begay grew up to be a jerk. What did he do? Oh, Chicago PD. That's what he's been on like a hundred, like almost 200 episodes. Yes. I think. Have you seen the 1966 movie King of Hearts? Uh, yeah. Is that with Alec? Guinness, or am I thinking something else? I I feel like I have seen that though. Um, you wish we would review Benji the Hunted. That has the most intricate animal acting I've ever seen. Maybe I'll add that to the pod my podcast list. <laughs> Actually, I remember watching Benji movies as a kid. I don't think I ever. I never watched Benji or Last. I'll, I'll have to add. You, let, don't let me forget to add it to my list. Um. Oh, someone's doing naked calisthenics right now. What do the young people say? Like if, like, if you don't have a picture, it didn't happen. Or what's that phrase? Like send a pic or it didn't happen. Or I don't know. It's not a phrase. There's like a cooler seen. way people say that. Oh, King of Hearts is with Alan Bates. I feel I don't think I've seen that actually. Debroka. No, Cohen Media Group re-released that. I think I saw the uh, restoration of it probably like 2018. But I. I could rewatch that. I did think Stanley was handsome. Uh, but yeah, his hair, well, his hair needed to go and also Jeffrey's hair because Jeffrey is also in the featurette, you know, 20 some years later. Mm -hmm. And he's still keeping that hair. And that hairline is like right here. Like, let it go, girl. He was in some other, Jeff Pankow was in some other great 80s films like Batteries Not Included, which is a thing. I'd love to rewatch that. Uh, and oh, the Friedkin classic To Live and Die in LA, which also has, you know, one of the, at least top five car chase scenes of all time. But in the movie The Possession, you could see the demon in the X ray. The Possession? Do I know that movie? The Ali Bornadal film or with Keir Sedgwick? I'm not sure. Someone said F that bird. 
I was mad about the bird. This is my house and I pay you to work here. That nurse was too mad. She was acting like she was volunteering. Yes. You are getting paid, ma'am. Like, if you don't like it, then you need to leave. Well, because he says some line to her about like, Ella needs a reward or something. She's like, what reward am I going to get? Uh, your paycheck. Your paycheck. Your paycheck is your reward. Um, <laughs> I was so bothered by the nurse because she was mad from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Because even when Alan first comes home and his old trifling ass girlfriend tries to get him a cocktail and she's like, oh, no, we use sippy cups and no ice. And if you are going to give him alcohol, you need to water it down. And then she storms out of the kitchen. Like, why are you mad right now? <laughs> Um, I'm trying to read these comments. Oh my God. When I was little, my cat used to leave bird heads by my back door. I feel like you have stories about cats. Oh yeah. Yeah. In Northern Minnesota, we had a, the dead of winter. Cause my dad was somebody who wouldn't let the cat inside, which drove me crazy. But, uh, this very hardy female, um, killed a pregnant rabbit in like January and all the baby rabbit fetuses were strewn out in the sidewalk. And I have a very clear memory of my mother trying to walking heels on the ice around these rabbit fetuses that were kind of uh, encased in ice. <laughs> it was really gross. Um, yeah. There's a movie called Coming Home. Yeah, Jane Fonda won her second Oscar. Does that have a sex scene with someone who's uh, paralyzed? John Voight. Oh. I don't remember what the year sex is scene. that? 1978. Oh. Okay. Um, I could rewatch that too, but that that's a, a really good anti-Vietnam film. But Oh. It's right here. That is what Jane found. Mm -hmm. Both yeah. of my neighbor's cats would bring dead mice, chicken leftovers they'd find at the street. And Bruce Dern's only Oscar nomination was for Coming Home. Oh, mm -hmm. Laura's dad. Yeah. Noted. Um, I'm glad other people use the word crunchy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, John Boyne, Jane Fonda. Okay, eight is enough. Jane, okay, Dick Van Patten, main claim to fame. Eight, eight is enough, okay. The Water Dance. Have you seen that? No. That's a great movie about people who are paralyzed. I'm still reading comments. Okay. So I guess Coming Home is... I haven't watched Coming Home since... God, it's been 20 years. But that's not, that sounds right. It is a no. Do, did you watch that show? No. With John... Not... Eight is enough. Because isn't there a movie with like Gabrielle Union? Eight is enough. Cheaper or? by the Dozen? Oh, I'm thinking of Cheaper by Which the Dozen. Which is the remake. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second remake. Wait, if you don't have it in the hips, you better have it in the lips. <laughs> I like that saying, but what does that mean? Is that Willem Dafoe? Where's that from? Well, it says Willem Dafoe, born on the fourth. I haven't seen, I'm not, I don't love Oliver Stone, but. Um, Defoe's great in Platoon. I mean, I know monkeys are strong because, well, but like little monkeys? I know chimpanzees rip, rip faces off, but I didn't, like, a, a little capuchin. Have you seen the video of, like, these people walking, like, through the forest, and then they come upon a big-ass orangutan? No. Like, just standing there, like, what's up? I didn't realize how big those things oh, are. Oh, yeah, they're huge. <laughs> it's like a gorilla. For an anthropology class, I remember I had to go to the Como Zoo to observe them for several many hours and take, you know, learning how to take field notes. And those orangutans started having sex. Oh, well, it's natural, I guess. Um, but I still believe I could take down a cappuccino. If my life depended on it, isn't a we're fighting. Isn't a cappuccino the one spreading the virus in outbreak as well? And I want to say it's in, Raider, the, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, the one that serves the poison figs. Someone said they beat the brakes off of that monkey. Yeah. I mean, if my life depends. Oh, of course. Yeah. But <laughs> because ultimately, um, the man in the wheelchair killed the monkey just did. by biting it. He so sure did. I don't know how that monkey took down Jeffrey. And the monkey, well, he trips up Melanie because he grabs her foot and then she falls and hits her head. But yeah, I don't know how he took down Jeffrey. Because he was weak. George Michael has a song about a monkey. I guess I don't know that song. I don't know that song. I'll have to look it up, though. Yeah, see, if a, you know, a monkey can do some damage. Oh, Lake Placid is a decent movie. Oh, Bridget Fonda. Yeah. Laurie Singer was in Fame. I never watched Fame. 
but uh, I um, need to watch uh, the the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never seen the film. Uh, but yeah, she was an '80s face. I remember well. Did I ever watch Mad About You? That's with Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt. I believe I've seen a few episodes. But did you? I saw somebody on it was either TikTok or Instagram watching Helen Hunt in some recent movie, saying she looked like a lima bean. <laughs> oh, I posted that. you. Yeah. <laughs> That lady's face is shaped like a lima bean. Well, it she's is. done some work on it. I feel that, she shouldn't. That have. girl put the hoe and Hoyer lift. <laughs> I always root for the animals and animals gone wild movies. Same. Well, usually, yeah. Seeing Jason Begay naked was the highlight of the movie. <laughs> Monkeys are wild animals. It's Pet Cemetery where they got the dead cat. <laughs> I'm late, but I'm here. Welcome. I love the original. Well, the, I actually, the original Piranha and Piranha 3D from Alexander Aja are both a lot of fun. Um, but they tagged us as fish belly. <laughs> I like that. We watched, what's that crocodile movie with that handsome man we watched with your sister? Where he's losing his hair and they're making fun of him? Oh, Robert Forster. Yeah, what's that movie? Alligator. Alligator. That was good. Robert Forster is serving in that movie. He is. Yeah. And I watched the sequel, like Alligator 2 something where... Mm -hmm. That's made like a decade later. Yeah, that was actually tolerable. Like, it was fun. Tolerable. The Monkey and Nope. Yes, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a... Oh, that, that poor psychotic thing. Oh, wait. <laughs> I just lost my... Oh, shoot. Okay. There are a lot of comments. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. Jason Begay was a Scientologist, former. God, I've never watched the X-Files either. Yeah, Ella's, the the real monkey was a boy monkey named Boo. I could rewatch Creepshow. I can, Creepshow is one of those movies, that Adrian Barbeau segment, I, I so love that. Call, what did she say? Um, call me Billy. <laughs> <laughs> they love your book knowledge thank you um, the movie Bats with Lou Diamond oh god that's terrible oh. <laughs> oh my god. that was a book too that I had as a kid and never read um, Jasmine is laid up sick I hope you feel better Bats that's like 1999 I, I want to say someone thinks our podcast is great thank you no thanks we're just sitting there talking to <laughs> yeah what are your to thoughts you? on Lost in Translation I think it's probably, I don't know, is that Sofia Coppola's best film? Either that or Virgin Suicides. It's fine. I, I also haven't seen it since 2003, um, and I could rewatch it, but I, I'm not crazy about Sofia Coppola. I think she's very white and privileged, and I think it comes across in her work, but a good Bill Murray performance, and I don't mind Scarlett Johansson. Um are you getting comic book movie fatigue? Well, you already don't like Marvel, DC type. I movies. had that back in 2000. <laughs> the first Spider-Man. I don't watch them really. So you watch more than I have. I have seen, unless I was out of town during the press screening. So I've never seen Black Widow. Um, Here's the thing. First of all, I cannot stand superheroes who don't have powers. Like um, we're going to go watch the Ant-Man movie. Uh, I haven't seen the other one. Or there are two. There, I think there's two. I want to say because he doesn't have powers. Like like Batman, I cannot watch Batman movies. He doesn't have any power. I actually don't mind Batman. Like Joker, if you want to, I liked. But I like that movie because it really wasn't about him needing powers. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so like X Men, I do like the X Men movies. Well, I think that's comic books, genre films. I appreciate for being subversive or. Uh, having subtext where we're actually talking about something else and not just these these bland people that are never going to die. Because uh, that's just, just boring to me. But Ant-Man, I'm uh, forever a Michelle Pfeiffer fan. So I will, That you know, it's nice to see her. We did watch episode three of The Last of Us. I skipped one and two. Which I had a hard time doing well you didn't have to do it i know but i don't like doing that um i did. well i mean i wouldn't watch four or one and two so uh i thought it was very sweet it was very moving um I, i'm dead inside so i don't think it really hit me the way everyone else but it was very sweet i'm i think i don't really love the conversations that are being had about it because i have a, there are so many fascinating things about the scenario with the nick offerman character potentially so he never would have had this kind of relationship if there wasn't 
you know, a zombie apocalypse. Uh, and also these two have also, it, it's a state of survival that they're in that has kept them together. It's not, if there were a plethora of options, you know, this relationship might have worked out. So there are so many fascinating things in the... Well, I agree with you. I, I, I think what you're describing w- would make an excellent movie Yeah, I, about sort of the dynamics, uh, like delving into sexuality and like, because uh, it's almost like prison mentality. Right. Like I don't have any other options and I'm in this like really extreme situation. So this thing evolves and all the things that go along with it and you know, in the Last of Us episode, it's very, I mean, it's played as being very sweet and they really don't have any issues and they grow old together. And it was very sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, you also, know, all the videos of people crying their hearts out wasn't me, but, I, but, but I just think it was sweet. No. And uh, I, you know, I always think that uh, just like sci fi genre films, we, it's really interesting if we explore how, uh, LGBTQ people or black people or any kind of others are uh, handled differently in, in genre. I think there are a lot of fascinating stories and uh, subplots still to be told. Thank you, BMCK. Um, yeah, we did get a, you did receive a cow eye in a box. <laughs> oh, I was so weirded out. <laughs> Who said this to me? What style theaters do you prefer? Art house, multiplex, half empty at a matinee? I prefer empty. Uh, I prefer art house. Well, most of the screenings you go to are at screening rooms mm-hmm. in LA. So they're like small. Mm-hmm. They almost look like when you go to like a rich person's mansion and they have a theater. Mm-hmm. That's how screening. And usually in bizarre buildings too. Yeah, it'll be like the one you go to a lot on Rodeo, which is in Beverly Hills. That one is like in a medical building. And so it's a lot of like Wilshire, the one off Wilshire. That's Wilshire, yeah. That one, um, there's like a medical. It's ba- it's mainly like doctors in there, and you can tell that it's a lot of rich, older Beverly Hills people probably getting like cosmetic procedures. And then in between, like radiology and the clinic office is this screening room. So every time I'm there, it's like you see people like they just got a facelift mm-hmm. or their nose done. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like those because it's um the seating is usually like they're big seats and you're not that close and the movies start like there are never any previews at screenings. So when I go see a movie like that we pay for, that's tedious. Sure. But <laughs> I like <clears throat> Alamo draft house. I like, um, assigned seating. I don't. Yeah. Um, it's something like the new Beverly in LA. I, I don't know that I've been there since they remodeled. Those the, seats were not the, comfortable. Those seats were comfortable. The seats at the silent theater, the Cine family back when that was open were terrible. But, and that's, those have been remodeled though. Cause we saw um, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf in that location. Those seats were not comfortable though. They still weren't, but they were better than. They were. Um, remember one time, what movie did we see where my butt. Left? <laughs> we were doing the Doug Benson interruption of Prometheus. And you, I don't know what was happening. You know, I'm very sensitive. I don't yeah. know if it was the detergent. I was. You, I don't know what happened, but how far along were we in the movie? Not long. The Before credits. I'm like, I have to get up. My like entire like ass was itching so bad. It wasn't like a hygiene thing. It wasn't like uh, critters. It was like I think I was having like an allergic reaction to something. And we were there with friends, mm-hmm. and we had to get up and leave. <laughs> so ever since then, thinking about sitting in that theater, I don't like it. Thank you, LJ. My first Janine T memory is Laura Templeton on General Hospital. Luke, real Laura, married on yacht. She fell overboard. Luke met Laura T when looking for missing wife. Demi M was LT's sister. That confusing ass story sounds exactly like what I expect from General Hospital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Picks or it didn't happen. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's what the kids say. Oh, someone's glad I'm feeling better. Me too. Although now I feel weird again, so... Um, ooh, a Benji movie with Chevy Chase? No. I hope the dog bites him. The dog probably didn't like him either. (laughs) That hairline bailed in 78. Short Circuit is a good movie. Nick really likes batteries not included. I do. God, Short Circuit. Where fucking Fisher Stevens is uh, playing an Indian man. (laughs) You know, I never liked Cats. I still don't, but I recall sort of thinking differently about Cats um, the first time I went to New York which would have been like 
probably like the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And the guy I was with there, he lived there and he, we went to a bodega because I kept saying, I want to go to a bodega. Like it was something like out of this world. And so we went to several and there were cats in there. And he explained to me that they have cats to chase away the mice or the rats. Oh, that reminds me, chopped cheese sounds good. So then I, from that moment on, I appreciated uh, cats more and, but chopped cheese. Mm -hmm. Speaking of bodegas. Sorry. Speaking of bodegas <laughs> and Cardi B, I watched an episode of that David Letterman Netflix special where he interviewed Cardi B. And that's why I learned about chopped cheese sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And then I asked you to make me a chopped cheese. We made several. Those are really good. Mm -hmm. It's basically a cheeseburger, except the meat and the cheese are like chopped up like ground beef together. Mm -hmm. And it's always American cheese, mm -hmm. the kind that melts. It's so good. It's not good for you. Oh, yeah. Bruce Turner, I guess he wasn't. So until Nebraska, which was 2013. Yeah, I feel like he was no, nominated for Nebraska. I didn't like that movie. Yeah, when the monkey puts the, the banana in the nurse's slipper, I was 100% sure that monkey shit in the slipper. And she should have counted herself lucky. It's just a banana peel. I remember when my husky killed an owl. I was mad. I had to clean it up, but I was impressed. <laughs> remember the owl, that scene of the owl attacking Tony Collette in the staircase? Yes. You know, I didn't love, I liked the documentary, The Staircase, but I didn't like the HBO series that much, except for all of the reenactments of how the killing could have happened. Yeah. Those were really well Those done. Those were pretty good. And very gruesome. Mm -hmm. It's not the size of the monkey, it's how mean it is. <laughs> yeah, well, like badgers. And Watch me talking all this shit, I'm going to end up getting attacked by a little monkey one day. Can you think of a movie that would benefit from a remake off the top of your head? Oh, I I would have to think. I'd what did you think of Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte? I love, Not you. Oh. They saw it for the first time last night. You love it. Oh, yeah. The, I do, too. The Twilight Time Blu-ray version of that has uh, an interview with Bruce Dern where he talks about, because he worked with Hitchcock in Frenzy, and he tells this really funny story about how Hitchcock dreamed because Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine were sisters who hated each other. They would they, they wouldn't speak. Uh and I, apparently Hitchcock had always fantasized about casting them in a movie without the, either one of them knowing it and how right. when they first show up on set and catch the looks on their their nasty faces. <laughs> Someone said orangutan sex voyeurism, my story. <laughs> okay, Venus extravaganza. Um, yeah, that little monkey does such a good job in the movie. I went to the LA Zoo once and every animal we saw were humping. It was mating season or something. <laughs> My niece was four. She still remembers. Yeah, I had to take minutes on this monkey sex. And then it's in the middle of the day and it's all these moms with these strollers. And they're like, are they doing what I think they're doing? You know, though, I think that watching animals have sex is probably a good way to introduce the topic of sex to kids. I don't know. Maybe not. Do I'm it not, like they do on the I'm Discovery child, Channel. I'm not a child development specialist. But. Mm -mm. Oh, I skipped ahead again. Damn. Um, oh, there are a lot of comments. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Mm -hmm. I've seen the TV show Fame, but not the movie. Why is that? I only watch Fame because Janet Jackson's in it. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The TV show. Oh, speaking of moose, the first time I went to Alaska, we went on this like tour, like they, we went and it was like the dead of winter and they got us on these snowmobiles and took us way far away. And we were walking in the forest and it's like white, white, white with all these like dead trees. And it's like, the, it was my first time in like winter where it's like so cold, the air feels thick and foggy. Mm. And the guy is telling us about like, be careful, like don't move quickly and we're walking. And all of a sudden we turn a corner and there's a moose. And I didn't realize how big moose were because I turn the corner and I see the moose and I go like this. Mm -hmm. yeah, that huge. thing was up, the head breathing down was up here mm -hmm. and the, whatever the antlers were so wide. And they can stomp. We had a baby moose show up in our yard when I was growing up and it tried to get the dog who was hiding under the deck and it ruined the porch trying to stomp on it. Robert Forrester was sexy AF and alligator. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very attractive and naked in reflections in a golden eye where he's the object of Marlon Brando's affection. 
Richard Pryor has a great joke about um, having a monkey. I feel like I remember that joke. Um, Apparently Richard Pryor also slept with Brando. Well, go Google Richard. Well, no. Yeah, don't Google that, I guess. Um, oh, hi, South Africa. Jober, where are you from? <laughs> Sophia is a Nepo baby, yep. Yeah. Does Nick think that reading Infinite Jest is worth it? I am thinking of getting into it this week. You know, I own that, and uh, it's long, and I haven't read it yet, but oh. I, it is on my list of things to read. You can't wait for the Ant-Man review? Well, I have no... I'm I'm going to watch it. I have... When I tell you I have zero interest in watching that, <laughs> where is it? Do you know? Probably AMC. Um, the press screening? I don't remember. The only good thing about going to see screenings there is we usually eat dinner first. Well, you like Takaya. I like Takaya because, you know, they have happy hour from four to six. Mm -hmm. So I feel good about that. And then usually at that theater, they'll give us popcorn and a drink. And I really love getting Slurpees. Yeah, you do like free things. I do like free things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not anything, but because I would never buy a Slurpee and popcorn at a movie theater on my own. Um, have you seen Beautiful Thing? No, the game I, I know of it. I haven't seen it. X-Men, I don't mind. Yeah. Well, at least the first two. Yeah, I yeah, when, I like the well, second one a lot. Once Halle Berry gets that little, well, her hair always looks crazy in those, but once she gets that like spiky haircut in the third one, directed by Brett Ratner. It's all bad, because the first, the Bob was terrible. Well, the Pixie is probably the best version, mm -hmm. but yeah. It should have been Angela Bassett. That's all. I often, okay, hold on. I don't mind Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette. Uh, the movie I really don't like by her is her Beguiled remake, but. I've been quoted now. I'm dead inside, but y'all might like it. <laughs> um, I am familiar with P-Valley, but we don't have, is it stars? Whatever platform P-Valley is on, we don't have that. But I do watch like on YouTube, like there are compilation clips of P-Valley. It looks like something I would like. Yeah, I would like to see it. But again, we still haven't finished Interview with the Vampire. Oh, that's right. We haven't. Where, where's Kyra uh, with Michelle Pfeiffer, directed by Andrew Dosenmu, was in my top 10 favorites of 2017. I really liked that movie with Kiefer Sutherland as well. Oh, we were at the Arrow in Santa... When the review we did for Set It Off, we saw that movie at the Arrow in Santa Monica. Oh, Peter Greenaway and Ken Russell. Ken Russell's dead now. Ken Russell, the, the Devils. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I now need a drama slash thriller about this opulent cosmetic surgery clinic. <laughs> uh, Peter Greenaway, the first can I went to in 2013, I was at the airport in Nice, and some man, because Peter Greenaway had some compilation film he had directed and some man's like hey are you peter greenaway he's like yeah he's like can i talk to you and greenaway goes if you buy me a coffee <laughs> listen <laughs> i'm gonna start doing that <laughs> buy me a hot dog and we can like, talk um someone's watching us on a 120 inch screen uh projection screen how do i look hmm. do i look okay <laughs> can you see all my pores um uh, well, you don't watch soap operas at all. When I was a kid with my mom, I would. My mom liked All My Children. We would watch All My Children, General Hospital. And then my mom liked telenovelas. So, like, I'm familiar with, like, like, Dos Mujeres y Un Camino or something like that. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I don't ever turn them on. Um, we talked about the Two Leslie thing in the last podcast, I right? I have yet to watch it. Um, but the controversy we talked about. Yeah, the yeah. maybe uh, uh, maybe this week I'll finally watch Two Leslie. I do like Andrea Riseborough. She probably is deserving of it. It's just. Oh, know. what's the movie where Fisher Stevens plays the indigenous person? I already we read just Short watched Circuit. It. No, isn't he in another movie we watched? He's with... in The Burning. He's just a kid in that. He's a teenager. Is that the movie with um, the sla it's a slasher movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With Jason Alexander. Mm -hmm. Bodega cats love laying on the bread. I mean, bread is soft. Who would you cast for the next White Lotus? Um, Mike White, you better call Sigourney Weaver. She needs to be in something. 
Oh, I just I lost my like place that. again. Okay. Um, there's not much better than Nick's expressions when Joseph is oversharing. <laughs> The staircase, do we think that man killed his wife? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. That owl theory had me going. I don't think, I think. <laughs> when I saw that owl scene, I'm like, maybe the owl killed her. When Colin Farrell um, performs analingus on Tony Collette in the kitchen, remember Ch Chelsea Handler going on about like, mm, no one is, you need to be prepared for that. And it's like, I believe that that woman was uh, sexually deprived. So even if, uh, she wasn't prepared to be uh, rimmed. <laughs> well, I mean, as she's long like, as he's you, touching me. As long as you took a shower, I mean, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't have to dig too yeah, far. Yeah, you just there. don't want to dig in there. Um, we did see Skin and Marink. There's a review for it. Oh, uh, I mean, I we are not of the popular opinion on that film for sure. But I, I have to be honest. I did. I really did not enjoy watching that. And I do like experimental films. A remake of Little Shop of Horrors as an R. Oh, yeah. A hard R. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Monkey Sex is a good title for a movie. Starring Marilyn Monroe. Have you seen Sidney Poitier and Ruby Dee in A Raisin in the Sun? Oh, of course. That movie, Lorraine Hansberry's play, they are talking about so many things we are exactly talking about today with religion, uh, housing. Housing. Oh, my I, God. I mean, I've seen that, of course. And I've actually read the play more than once. Yes. Um, I mean, it's a good... I, it's a, a must read, but I also I, I think also because it's so timely. Mm -hmm. Ruby D is so good. That's another woman that I mean I know she got an Oscar nod for American Gangster, but several many performances. I have the song for Hush Hush on Forty Five. I'm that old. Oh, of course we remember the show Oz. Mm -hmm. So it was popular in South Africa. Who's the guy who everyone always talked about his butt? Christopher Maloney. Yeah, uh, Rita Moreno was in that too. I think. Cha, have y'all seen Rita Moreno do all these interviews for 80 for Brady? She is like, someone needs to come get their great-grandmother because she is talking real loose and crazy. <laughs> I prefer that to a very prudish-seeming Sally Field. Yeah, Sally seems like she's no fun. Sally, stop it. Stop. Um, Lily seems like she's kind of out of it. Mm -hmm. And then Jane seems like she wants to talk about other things yeah. than her work. Mm -hmm. So the four of them together is not, I mean, it's kind of a train wreck. Yeah, a little bit. In interviews. Oh, is that why my niece is the mother of four now and only 27? <laughs> Busy. So, sounds like a cousin of mine. Yeah. Won't say her name. Reflection <laughs> in a Golden Eye. We did a review for that blue. Oh, yeah, we have a, a review for that. Yeah, that's a favorite. Oh, God, imagine hitting a bull moose with your car. No. I have not seen the women of Brewster Place. I was just bringing that up. Yeah, you just with, mentioned with, that with Oprah. But yes, I'm familiar with that. Well, because I wanted to do more like '90s black cinema reviews. But so. that, that's '80s technically, isn't it? Yeah, '89. Like I also bought you the series. Is it Backstairs at the White House with Leslie Uggams? We've owned that forever and never watched it. A series from the '70s. Ant Man will be at least 45 minutes too long. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Meteor Man. I haven't seen a film called Meteor Man. Do you know what happens to a toad that gets struck by lightning? That's a joke? Or is that for real? Mm. Well, now I want to know the answer. Yeah. Or the or the punchline. Uh, Brett Ratner is yuck. Yeah. We should raffle a viewing party for charity. By charity, you mean my Venmo? No. <laughs> the LGBT center of Larchmont. <laughs> and it's my Venmo. <laughs> Um, the Beguiled remake, trash. The original is so good. My favorite Don Siegel film. Um, Dot James Gunn was he named the head of DC? I'm so out of the loop on all of that, but I I like James Gunn. I thought the Suicide Squad that he did was really impressive. Again, he's very good with ensemble character, or ensemble casts, and uh, vibrant characters. Someone really misses Jessica Lange. Is she gone? No, she has a new movie coming out. Um, February 15th, Marlowe, directed by Neil Jordan, which I'm very, I'm reading the book it's based on right now, uh, and I hope to get a screening link by next Friday. I'm, yeah, I love Jessica Lange. You have no idea how we can do the, this many shows? I don't either. Um, That's oh, yeah, you agree. Superheroes should have powers. Um, well, they can also be allowed to be, you know, human and have uh, 
uh, failings as well. And it's okay to let them die. I just, I don't know. We're both stunning, um, including the person who has us on a 120 inch uh, screen. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I didn't floss this morning. Um, <laughs> Oh, Melrose Place. Okay, if, if we're going to include like primetime soaps, then... Oh, yeah, I was talking about daytime Yeah, soaps. I was thinking daytime, but of like Melrose Place, the 90210, oh my God. And the more trashy they got, like when Heather Locklear joined Melrose Place, it got even better <laughs> to me. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, in the season finale with the bomb. <laughs> Oh, my God. And when the redhead lady pulls back her wig because she had the brain injury. Oh, God. That sounds kind of... What's her name? Marsha... Uh, Marsha anyway. Cross? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. Um, Two Leslie's terrible. Yeah, I, I mean... White Oleander with oh, Michelle Key. That was a pretty good book, too. I want, is it Alison Lohman is the star of that? I'm not, I, I'm not saying he, that man didn't kill his wife in the staircase. Um, but I think... Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But the Al thing did pretty sus. It did have me. Sus. It, it, it did have me thinking. And then how he treats the Juliet Binoche character after all is said and done. It's like I'm not going to France. <laughs> There's an the the HBO miniseries for the staircase. They are positing that like they give multiple scenarios of how the wife could have died, and we see the two of them sitting by their pool. And she realizes that he's doing something sketchy. I forget what it is. And then he tries to like get her mind off of it. And that's where the rimming scene comes mm -hmm. from. <laughs> um, Charmed. You know, I never watched Charmed, but I know it's Rose McGowan, Alyssa Milano. And um, was, was Alyssa Milano part of the original? I don't know. I don't, uh, I did it Shannon Doherty? Oh, she was a part of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, my mom had such strong opinions about Shannon Doherty. Yeah. Because um, wasn't I, there drama where she got fired from... Well, I think the idea was that she was um, difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because didn't she... She had clashed with Aaron Spelling? I don't know. But my mother, I remember, didn't like her. I just edited our review for Cocaine Bear, but it doesn't come out. I'm, I can't post it for another, like, two weeks, I think. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't think I can even give a reaction. Oh, okay. Well, moving on. Oh, I lost my spot again. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Oh, I'm curious about this. PBS has a hip-hop documentary, a four-part. Um, I would be interested. Uh, in yes, that. and we still got to watch that Dionne Warwick. I got to watch the Dionne Warwick doc. I have to watch the Pamela Anderson doc. Oh, we're over an hour. Okay, let me get through these. Uh Oh, I do like I'm going to get you, sucker. Mm -hmm. And low down, dirty shame. That's the classic line from the first X-Men from Halle Berry's character. Do you know what happens to a toad? Oh. A toad. Oh, my God. I should rewatch that. It would be hilarious to watch a movie with you guys. Oh, maybe, maybe. It depends on my mood. Strange Days, I do like. Catherine Bigelow, Angela Bassett is pretty fierce in that. And I like Julia Lewis. Oh, we oh. need to watch Atlanta. I, I know. Cujo. Um, I liked uh, D. Wallace in the original. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Watch. What What were our thoughts when Pamela's tape leaked? I'm in my early 20s, so now people's nudes get leaked. Um, well, because when th that leaked, it wasn't like you could immediately hop online and see it, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like, how do you watch it? Someone has a copy. And eventually someone's going to see it. It took a very long time for me to actually see images from the tape. But I don't think I've ever seen. But I obviously everybody knew about that. Now that I'm an adult and, th and like thinking about it, I mean, it's just so embarrassing. You know, sex work and pornography is, I think, when everyone's consenting um, is totally fine. But to think that like people made, you know, captured this footage for their own private use and then someone exploits that is, you know, I mean, such a violation. So then it feels icky to even think like, you know, like that their privacy was invaded in that way. Mm -hmm. And then her in particular, she's so like objectified and now people have footage of her being sexual in a way that she did not want people to see. Sure. So 
I don't know. I mean, I definitely didn't think that at the time. I just thought like, oh my God, like I wouldn't have had access to it. So it was just kind of this thing that I knew happened. But also I knew that she was like, it's not like Barbara Walters had a sex tape. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh my God, how could like this rock star and this super sexy actress, like I'm, I'm sure I was like, well, I guess that's what people they're do. Ha they're having sex just like everyone else. Rita Moreno was harsh on Natalie Wood. <laughs> in the, well, you know, Natalie Wood was white girl. And if uh, I can understand the frustration of like, one, she can't really sing and she's not the uh, right color for this role. Uh, and I can understand being bitter and angry about that. Um, I noticed a lot of people like on Letterboxd, um, like Mulholland Drive is their favorite movie. Oh, it's good. Have I seen it? Probably not. Yeah. But it, do you think I would like it? Well, you're a little so-so on. I made you watch Blue Velvet because that's in my top ten of all time, and you didn't love that, despite a great Isabella Rossellini performance. But uh, I mean, you know, David Lynch is a, and you've seen Eraserhead, but we should we should watch it because it's Naomi Watts is very good in it. Um, but yeah, Sally Struthers does not like Rita. <laughs> Do you like, I don't, I like Xavier Dolan's first film. I had drinks with him in 2014 in the Toronto Film Festival. Enough said, but uh, I, do, I don't think he's a good filmmaker. I think he has nothing to say. Well, we have to go because I need to record a review for the BET Plus original, The Reading, starring Monique Hicks, executive produced by Lee Daniels. And I'm kind of looking forward to this review because this movie was a train wreck. <laughs> but um, I don't know what the next uh, category will be, but I'm sure we'll do one this coming Saturday because you'll be out of town the following Correct. Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, Grand Canyon, Lawrence Kasdan, where they uh, link up Elfrey Woodard and Danny Glover because the, the white characters are like, you're the only black person I know. You should fall in love. <laughs> That's it, my memory of Grand Canyon. <laughs> Fish Jelly is a, a play on the Destiny's Child song, Bootylicious, how they say, I don't think you're ready for this jelly. And we always thought it sounded like fish jelly. That's it. <laughs> it's not that uh, interesting. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to say? No. All right. Toodaloo.